What's up everybody, I'm Finn McKenty. This is my second channel and this is your home for my Twitch highlights and my podcast. So if you like this and you wanna see more of that and you wanna join the live streams, there's a link to that in the description of this video. And with that out of the way, let's talk about power metal. One of the most ridiculous genres of music. I mean, you already get the idea of what you're in for because the top of the Wikipedia says, Epic Metal redirects here. And that's a pretty good way to think about it. I'll read their definition in a second, but my definition of power metal would be this. You know when you go to the food court and you see that guy sitting there by himself in front of the crappy Chinese place with his leather duster and fedora and some boots with too many buckles on them and the transitions lenses. Maybe like he might have his dungeon master screen set up on the table in front of him and a big bag from the anime store just full to the brim. And he's sitting there like he's the Lord of his castle uh, atop his throne. That guy, if you took that guy and turned him into a genre of music, that's what power metal would be. Only on top of being that guy, he would also probably be German. But this is what Wikipedia has to say about it. Power metal is a subgenre of heavy metal combining characteristics of traditional heavy metal with speed metal, often with symphonic context. Generally, power metal is characterized by a faster, lighter, and more uplifting sound in contrast to the heaviness and dissonance prevalent, for example, in extreme metal. Power metal bands usually have anthem-like choruses with fantasy-based subject matter and strong choruses, thus creating a theatrical, dramatic, and emotionally powerful sound. Well, let's listen to it just to give you an example of what we are talking about here and get the fun started. I'll start with, to me, what is maybe one of the most definitive bands in power metal, Hammerfall. I don't know where this band is from, probably Germany, but we'll start with this. Hearts on Fire by Hammerfall. And you know you're in for it because the intro like legitimately looks like the CG intro for some like shit tier original Xbox RPG, like some Oblivion DLC. Yes, look at that. The skeleton. 24 million views. This stuff is bizarrely popular. Of course, only in Europe because uh, don't tell anyone, but Europeans will listen to anything. You notice every festival lineup is full of washed up American bands that couldn't draw a thousand people here, but they're headlining some European festival. This is because everybody in the music industry knows this. Nobody will say it, but everyone in the music industry knows this is true. Europeans will like anything. A lot of leather, long hair blowing in the wind. We gotta do like power metal bingo. Sleeveless anything has gotta be a requirement. Bonus points of its leather, long hair blowing in the wind, really bad CG, some sort of character that appears like it could have been an enemy in a shit tier RPG from the 2000s is another thing. So already, you know, we've checked three or four boxes. We've got that book that looks like it could be an item in Morrowind. The gauntlets, look at that. You guys know how much I care about wrist accessories, right? I mean, anytime I talk about butt rock or new metal, I'm always focused on the wrists because wrist accessories are the most important part of music. And right off the bat, we've got gauntlets. I mean, what more powerful wrist accessory could you wish for than that? They call it power metal for a reason because the singer is wearing fucking gauntlets. Doesn't get any more powerful than that. This also, this, this arm movement is a requirement in power metal. Time on the throne is running out. This song will unify the world. Much happiness. Another one of those arm movements. Armor is another important part of the power metal bingo checklist, but not like black metal armor, right? Because someone said it earlier, I thought it was really good. Power metal is the lawful good of the metal world. Like if black metal is the chaotic evil, Hammerfall and power metal in general is the lawful good. So if the armor that you would see in a black metal video would be like the Dark Knight's armor, this is Paladin armor. It's not scary, bad, dark armor. This is good guy armor. Yeah, pointy guitars for sure. Dragon and Throne mentioned in every song, definitely. And now, 
That's a good arm movement too, the Uh oh. Someone cast a summon spell, but it's don't worry, it's only skeletons. Someone summoned a trash mob. I'm sure this band wrote a Game of Thrones level lore, but got a CCTV budget. Look at that. Tapping his foot. He doesn't give a fuck. He sees this skeleton horde coming across the field, but he doesn't care. He's just tapping his foot away in his leather pants. There we go, see? He was just waiting for his limit break gauge to fill up. That's why he wasn't worried. He saw those skeletons coming, but he knew his limit break gauge was almost full. Then he just waited until they got close. Boom! Blew them all up. The end! Power metal on your fucking face! So that's kind of a good overview of what to expect from power metal, I think, right? You might think this is just one absurd band, right? But the entire genre is like this. It's absolutely amazing. Truly incredible stuff. Let's turn back the clock a bit to the founders of power metal, as far as I'm concerned, which is a band called Manowar from uh, upstate New York, as I recall. And you might think that this song, Gloves of Metal, that sounds like a joke from a South Park skit, right? I assure you that nothing about Manowar is a joke. When they say Gloves of Metal, they are dead serious. <laughs> Manowar all chose Barbarian class, yes. This literally looks like some skit or something, right? But again, I assure you, it, it took me years to figure this out about whether they're joking or not. They're not joking. And of course, they're absurdly popular in Germany. Already, we've got... I, I can't really make it out here because it's so pixelated, but I'm relatively sure there is some shirtless garment here, probably made of leather. Someone's riding on a horse. So you know that there's going to be long hair blowing in the wind. We're doing good on our, our power metal bingo. The Sleeveless garment. There we go. And again, they're not joking. They're dead serious about this shit. Look at this outfit. This is like some Ric Flair barbarian thing. Like a homemade, like local wrestling championship belt with this looks like you took one of those sheepskin rugs you might find at a thrift store or something but like a fake one and just cut it up into a coat which actually now that i think about it is is very likely what they actually did we we the, there we go we wear leather we wear spikes there we have it here's the armor see look there's so much armor in this video anybody in the chat has a power metal bingo let me know and i'll give you a, a free loincloth or something i feel like that'd be a good prize right we rule literally discovered these guys cutting class with older stoners sounds about right this is some real shit tier armor though this is like level one stuff that you would find in the first dungeon by the second town you've already leveled up past this stuff and these poor guys are still wearing the same shitty loot from the level one dungeon synchronized stage moves is probably also something we should add to the list am i a fan of some bands in this genre no i'm not other than i actually like one man of war song gloves of metal this is the only song I like in this genre. I legitimately think this is a great song. It's basically like pop punk. This song is great. The lyrics are absolutely hilarious. An eagle with a man's chest. I never noticed that. Wow, that's weird. Why would you do that? This eagle has abs. This is a great point from my wife in the chat. Yet again, men are expected to meet this unrealistic beauty standard. Now I have to grow wings. It's not enough just to have huge pecs and an eight pack. I have to have wings too. Fuck this band and fuck this video. Anyway, that's the only song in this genre I really like. For the most part, other than that, I think power metal is just trash. So that gives you an idea of what to expect from power metal. Let's keep going. I haven't watched much of these other ones. Just sort of... Uh, giving them a quick look. So we're going to watch these together. This already sounds like the music in the inn in the first town of Baldur's Gate. And they have like the overdubbed like background talking. Like the rubble, 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 rubble. I feel like I need to find the innkeeper to get my first quest. There we go. 
Looks like a big box PC game logo. That's another important thing, right? <laughs> Temple of Elemental Evil, Heroes of Might and Magic, Neverwinter Nights. This is the good shit right here. Baldur's Gate, of course. Baldur's Gate 2 is the best RPG of all time, period. Hands, hands down, no question. Baldur's Gate 2 is the best. Baldur's Gate 1 is good. Baldur's Gate 2 is better. Yeah, <laughs> play a game. Power Metal album or PC game? I like it so far. Already, I feel like I'm watching the intro for a generic big box PC game, and I'm happy about that. Okay, I can't wait to play this game. Light of the Sapphire Dragon, wow. This DLC is gonna be awesome. RTX on. This is a gang of elves, apparently. Oh, there's crafting. Great, I love crafting. This legitimately does look like a pre-rendered cutscene. I'm not even exaggerating. The big box PC games are the equivalent of vinyl records. This is very true. Except there's one important difference is I don't like vinyl and I do like big box PC games. So um, your interests are dumb, frivolous wastes of time and my interests honor great underappreciated pieces of art. That's the difference. My interests are good and your interests are bad. Oh boy. Oh, okay. We've got the, the mage with his staff in the background. This looks like the thief. And over here, we've got the ninja. Apparently this elf is the sorcerer. Oh, look, we got a bingo there. We got a bingo. He did the, he did the hand movement. There we go. Oh, double power metal hand grab, the, the air grab. What do you call, what, what do we call that? Grabbing the sun. Yeah, let's call that. Grabbing the sun. That's a good one. A double sun grab. Okay, now they, they just camped. They must, it must be time to save. Look at this guy. He is into, he is into this. He's one of the people that plans their Halloween costumes starting in like January and posts on Facebook for months and months and months about how he's, you know, learned how to do 3D printing so he could make his shoulder, you know, pads or whatever. That's this guy. This video has been in the works for a very, very, very long time. And he is into it. As obviously shitty as it is to us, to this man, it's his life's work. Is, the, is this true? These guys dress up for their live shows too, including elf ears? Like, I feel like you're not joking. I feel like that's actually true. Okay, I wanna see this guy. I wanna see some spells here. Okay. Let's see some spells. There we go. Oh, and the ninja's showing up his abilities too. This is like the intro where they sort of give you an idea of what all the characters are and, you know, what their abilities are and stuff like that. I will admit, I've seen intros that are a little bit more impressive, but considering that this appears to be an independent European game, what can you expect? Oh, they just found the object. They found the MacGuffin. Here's the thing. I do give them an A for effort here. I mean, a lot went into this video. Hats off for that. But the song is bad, even by power metal standards. It's like they just kind of wrote the most basic power metal song you ever could and then put all their energy into the video. And you know what? I'm okay with that. Just saying the song, you know, not as good as the video, unfortunately. It's a good question. How come Ice Nine Kills can take horror and do so well with it, but the fantasy genre just ends up sounding so cheesy when bands use it? Well, part of that is because horror is for nerds too, but there is a hierarchy to, to these nerdy, geeky things, right? I mean, like, furries are at the bottom, right? Is there anything lower than furries on the hierarchy of nerds? I'm not sure that there is. And then maybe above that would be LARPers. Pretty sad, but... Not as bad as furries. Above that, maybe, would be like comic book people. And then probably at the top of it is horror people. They're still nerds, but at least horror is kind of edgy. I feel like of the pyramid of dorky shit, horror movies are probably at or near the top. So I think that's probably why it works. Okay, well, I think I've seen enough of this. Maybe we can skip ahead and see if there's... Oh, there's the loot. Oh, look at... Oh, fuck. Wait, we got to see this. He's shredding on the loot. We got to see this. Shred the loot. Yes. 
devastating loot solo. Sweeping on the loot. You ever seen a, an elf sweep on an enchanted loot? Fuck no you haven't, and now you have, thanks to Twilight Force. I think we can end on that. I mean, it's hard for that video to get any better, and we still have a lot more to watch. Next up, we have Cowboys of the Sea by Ramahoy. I'm unsure how much of a joke this band is. Let's see. I love maps. Does anyone else love maps in RPGs? Oh, we got a sleeveless garment. One box checked. This sounds like when you're about to level up in Skyrim and it plays that like chanting, kind of sounds like that. I have returned from across the way, riding my seahorse into the fray. And then there's a frolicking dolphin here. I'm on board with this. Yes, the name of... Exactly. Uh, from the chat here, just dawned on me their name is saying Ahoy about rum. Alestorm does this st this shtick as well. That is true, but I, I like this better for some reason. I feel like Alestorm is so dorky. I mean, this is dorky too, but it's not as dorky as Alestorm at least. Some pirate wenches. We are the cowboys of the sea. That's right, yeah. There are multiple pirate power metal bands. Swashbuckle, Alestorm, Rum Ahoy. There's got to be at least another one. I don't get it. Why? All right, so that was Rum Ahoy. I like it. I'm into it. I feel like this right here, I'm having a conversation with like a faction leader of these like really badass pirates. Rum Ahoy apparently has a song called Harambe the Pirate Gorilla. I'm on board with it. This is an American band, alternate reality. And I like that this guy, Steve, has given himself writer, director, and producer credits. You might think that that's overstated, but I think once you see the lore on display here, you'll understand. This is the story of a king and his quest for a mighty sword with the power to forge a new nation, a kingdom of metal. A kingdom of metal. I'm pretty sure this band is from Cleveland, by the way, which is great and amazing <laughs> and perfect. Lord, guide my hand and its caliber. Yes, from the chat here, only metalheads can say metal with the hard T. Arthur, and of stunning Guinevere, princess warrior, Sir Lancelot, noble and trusted knight. Sir Lancelot, the noble and trusted knight. When you pictured Lancelot and Guinevere, when you're reading King Arthur in school or something, is this what you pictured? Was that Lancelot and that was Guinevere? Like, she looks so unhappy to be there. This is from 2011, so she's still got her motocross skunk hair there. Trusted knight of Merlin the wizard. <laughs> that's Merlin the wizard. I pictured him a little bit differently, but all right. If Merlin was from Cleveland. Who for Arthur pledged his life? Of Morgana, highest sorceress. Ooh, and Morgana. Divine. But a sanction has been imposed on the Druid's religion. Uh oh. Fire a sanction has impo been imposed on the Druid's religion. That's not good. That sounds like a problem that Steve needs to fix. There's a fall rage high. The wicked necromancer spins his magical powers and. Look, he's pondering his orb. <laughs> See? Look, it's him. He's pondering his orb. Behold Mordred, the dark warrior, treacherous fiend, and traitor. Mordred, uh-oh. That looks bad. To defy Arthur in the final battle for the kingdom. Listen to how she said battle. That's how you know they're from Cleveland. The final battle. Final battle for the kingdom and the power. Is it myth or is it... Now you guys know that I talk shit on intros, right? Tell everyone, like, don't bore us, get to the chorus, no songs or videos should have intros. This is where I make an exception. This, my friends, is what you call a fucking intro. Steve, my man, you delivered. You showed us what an intro is supposed to be. You got this beautiful wench in her, uh, her, her outfit. <laughs> I don't know what to call it. This isn't an intro. This is art. Okay? When you look up cinematic in the dictionary, this is what you see. Okay, my friends? Be on notice. If you want to do an intro to your video, this is the standard which you must meet. Reality. Hail 
to the king that never was. That's right. And I love the song because, like, this song, just because they're so bad, it sounds like the Misfits, but by accident. It's just because they can literally barely play. It sounds like punk. Like, this literally sounds like some early 80s punk band. Steve's got his affliction shirt on. Drummer's going wild over there. Look at him. Mad Mad Merlin. Wow. Okay, we've, we've, we've almost got one of the... Grabbing the sun. Ah. Her HP is reduced to zero. The devastating solo. Oh, God. It look. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Watch him hop when the guy tries to chop his ankles or something and he hops over it. There we go. That's called choreography, my friends. Here's where this dramatic tale comes to its thrilling conclusion. Arthur. Arthur. Oh yeah, he did it. Okay, he did it. Did you guys see it? Yes, gent bands need to learn from this and start doing these instead of colored room genting. I agree. <laughs> Trevor is definitely a middle school history teacher. Yes. They finally defeated... What is his name? Mordred or whatever? There we go, my friends. That is what you call art. The greatest video ever made. Written, produced, directed, choreographed, mixed, engineered, mastered, and edited by Steve. Directed and written by Steve for Steve Productions on behalf of Steve Enterprises, a division of the Steve Corporation. Extremely advanced, I agree. It's gonna be hard to top that one. And I don't know if we can, but I do have something that's pretty fucking good. <laughs>